I believe that in about 15 years we will all have some sort of 3D printer in our house. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you, you are well. I generally hope you're well during this crazy 2021. Trying to bring you a little bit of happiness, a little bit of clumsiness, a little bit of catastrophic kitchen culinary cuisine-esque fun in 2021, just to get through this year. I, I generally hope you're well. Uh, welcome to the kitchen, all that stuff. Today, doing a video that I am stonkingly excited about. Ugh, this, sent to me by Shartical Physics on Twitter, okay? Doesn't have many followers. That is because they wish to remain anonymous. But if you have any questions, any questions at all, don't direct them at me, direct them at the Twitter handle. Okay, because this is, this is really cool today. I'm so excited and I can say excited because one of them involves an egg. There's loads. I'm gonna get through these as quick as I can. Let's go. All right, so if you don't know what 3D printing is, basically it's like a standard printer, but it's three dimensional, but it goes vertically as well. So you kind of like get molten lava-esque plastic or bamboo is becoming more popular, which particularly for food grade could be amazing. Uh, you go up and down, up and down like that, and it just prints off the source files that you get. For example, this, or this absolutely epic Tachosaurus. Now, sometimes it doesn't always work, as this photo on your screen received right now. Charticle Physics sent me this saying, look, I tried to make you this and it melted, uh, so I've had to make a smaller one. So we're not sure if that'll work. And all of these source files come from a website called Thingiverse, okay? So I will credit them fully on my website page so you can see every single one. Um, there's actually ones for my logo that have been done as well. So if you do 3D print and you want to 3D print off my logo, you could do that. And I actually put a poll up on my Twitter because it's all quite a new thing. People say that you can actually 3D print food fairly soon. That's like, it's actually like 3D printing your dinner. But I do believe, and also you guys on Twitter, if you check this poll out, believe that in the future, rather than necessarily ordering stuff online all the time, in some instances, I mean, if you can, you'll recognize this one, right? You can print something off. You just get the source file. I don't know how they'll protect that, but that is possibly the future, folks. I should have worn my Back to the Future t-shirt. Damn it. This first one, when I got it out of the box last night, I don't know if you can see, I've got some Gorilla Glue on there because this is supposed to be a toast extractor. It's solid on one side, and in the middle there's a disc, and I think this is gonna break, okay? So this is supposed to extract toast. Look. Yeah, it did it again. But at least I thought, well, I'll glue it back together to show you. Like, even that, yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna pinch toast through that. So, the first one is a bit of a fail, I'm afraid. This is the Tachosaurus. It is basically supposed to be a holder for your taco shell. Now, apparently, this should be double the size, um, but um, the printer that was used was not large enough uh, at the time to be able to make it the full size, so I've actually got a mini one. Uh, so I have got a hard taco shell here right now. There is a groove there, you can see. It's still a little slot. I'm not sure what dinosaur species this is. And that, despite it being half the size, is holding up the taco shell. That one works. Folks, do you remember a while ago I did a gadget called a jar key, which is very popular actually. This I think is a clone of it. Uh, it's basically a jar opener. I've only got one jar and there was a mention in there that this may not work because it didn't print off amazingly. But to be honest, for me, it looks all right unless this nib uh, shatters on it. But this is what I'm talking about. If, if you can print this sort of stuff off at home, it could be life-changing, like, because this is one of the best gadgets if it works. So I've got a jar. Effectively, what it does is, hopefully, if I can get under it. <laughs> it did it, but, <laughs> but it's like one use only. Oh my gosh. It worked. That's, that's all we're saying. <laughs> This is basically a bottle opener. I have a bottle of, uh, of a beverage. Uh, this is not soft, so I will uh, drink it cautiously throughout the video. Uh, Self-explanatory looks a little bit angry, doesn't it? Whoa, Amy, don't get scared of it. Okay, so uh, is it this way? Yes, it's this way. Oh, wow, okay, see? We're gonna get the leverage. So this is what's hooking it, and then we're using that. Okay, I think. No. Oh, oh no, you go like that. Oh, mm, really nice after my cornflakes. I tell you what, I'm gonna 3D print a pug. And to be honest, the person that did send me these did say these are kind of like entry level gadgets. If this goes down well, you guys wanna see more, we can get a load more, maybe more complex ones as well, which is, I don't know, so far looking rather good indeed. Okay, folks, so when this package arrived, I was a little bit freaked out. I was thinking, oh, it's, uh, I've got two of them and it's a citrus juicer. When I actually thought, 
and I heard about being potentially sent these gadgets, I was like, oh, one of them's got to be one of these. Uh, this takes quite a long time to print, by the way, with it being something this size, apparently. Uh, but basically, I was like, why the heck does it have a hole in the bottom? Why would you want a juicer that does not collect the juice? Uh, and then I saw that I had a second one. Now, basically, I don't know if you've ever seen this before. Hello, I am a wasp. This one is a failed one. Now, if you look very closely there, it's a thread, okay? The base of that is a thread, but then this one is printed a little bit better, all right? I've got some oranges that are directly under my nose and they smell amazing right now. <laughs> so this is the thing, right? We're not gonna do this one. This is the one that works perfectly. I love it, I love it. And here is a generic uh, bottle. This is, I think, 500 ml one that I've uh, washed out. And this should attach onto here, okay? <laughs> So if you can see there, you can, you've can you got like the inner circle with the thread around it and we just go like this. It looks like one of them uh, Mexican tequila bottles, doesn't it? I can't remember the name of the brand. It's got a sombrero on. Oh my gosh. You gotta give it a little bit of support, but that is absolutely genius. Now I was warned that these, the way they were printed um, in the plastic that they are, you can get food safe coatings on them. There are more food safe ones that are more expensive. This is literally just for demonstration purposes and like a, kind of like a one use thing. Purely as I say for demonstration, educational purposes, which is something that I never thought I'd do. I'm a teacher. But that is blooming amazing. What I find is really cool is if you like what I've just done with that and you have a 3D printer at home, I believe that in about 15 years we will all have some sort of 3D printer in our house. And that sounds a bit crazy. You could actually print this off right now if you have one and be like, I'm a Barry, I'm a Barry. Oh, that's nice. I just got like the biggest egg I could find out of my bowl. And like Phoebe's like, Daddy, is that a fat pigeon? We do have this like pigeon at the end of our garden. I don't know if I can get it. It's right on that post in the distance. You see that? It's huge. Did you lay that egg I'm about to crack? Probably giving this away now, haven't I? <laughs> Can you guess what this is supposed to be? Yes, folks. It's an egg separator. Very self-explanatory. I think we've got the little groove there, which should hopefully, oh my gosh, if I don't break it, go onto our bowl. Oh, there we go. I do have a 3D printed knife, but I'm not gonna risk it. We just drop the egg yolk in like that. Okay. I've never used one like this before, but you can see that gravity is starting to pull that egg white down. This might be <laughs> the long version, but I think in a minute-ish, we'll have to come back to this. <laughs> the, the egg white will drop. Oh my gosh, it looks like it's got a cold. Once it gets to room temperature, I always keep my eggs in the fridge because I feel like the yolks hold better that way. Once it gets to room temperature, that will drop. So we will come back to that. I'll put it in the background and we'll move on to one almost identical. Guys, they're multiplying. They're multiplying, look. There's now two of them. <gasps> oh my gosh, I remember now when we had this uh, part built, these two, um, I was sat in, in there because that was my temporary office and they would actually fly into this bit when it was all open and we didn't finish it off. They actually <laughs> they kept banging their like, heads on this glass. Are they, do they like live here now? All right, so this is a, a bowl of tortilla chips and this one looks fairly similar to the egg separator except it's solid and looks more like a cone, right? We've got the lip on the edge again. We sit that on there. <laughs> I nearly missed it then. This is self-explanatory. You put your salsa in there and you can just dunk, dunk, dunk. Mmm. You're supposed to be homeschooling, I know. Yes. But. There's a reason I've got those bags, all right? I want you to fill them up with anything you want. Don't put a dog in a bag, okay. no? You're not Paris Hilton. All right, folks, imagine that you're putting beers in a fridge and they sort of roll back and forth, but you want to use this space here without them rolling forward and potentially off, ah, and crushing the, oh, the pugs have gone. Good point, good stuff, guys, good movement. There's a 3D printed gadget to stop that happening so you can power them higher. This is a soda shelf stop a blocker thing. That's what we're going to call it. It looks a little bit like a skateboard ramp. <laughs> so basically this back end here will stop with the ability of having this little stubby bit, stop it pushing the cans out. I haven't got that many, but I actually can see already that this should 
work. So here we go. If I, no, see it's pushing it there. So this is where, oh my gosh. This is where I explode a load of fizzy beer everywhere. You stick this here. If we just stack this up now, oh look, it's actually rubbed against that. That is genius. So now hopefully, yeah, I haven't got any more cans left. Actually, if I take one from the, oh there we go, I've got one. Look at that. That's amazing, I've got another can here. Can I fit it up there? Oh, geez, don't go too, don't go three high. <laughs> Well, it could just be user error. Look at that, that stopped that whole thing moving. You can get all that space filled. I like that. So, do you want a drink? Okay, folks, uh, I've got some biscuit dough here. Now, this is the same biscuit dough. It's very delicate, needs to be kept chilled to try and keep its shape. Used for jammy dodges, custard creams like we've made here in the past. I found out the other day that something about 500 people a year get injured from biscuits, from eating them, like dunking them in too hot tea, or poking themselves in the eye, or breaking a tooth, something like that. I've been sent, this is how long ago that I was sent this. Look, this is the My Virgin Kitchen cookie stamper, and this is supposed to be a chocolate stamper. So, we're gonna try and push in like so and <laughs> it's not coming out no i think that these should have been solid in the middle we don't worry about mvk anymore anyway we'll worry about the barry lewis logo i'm going to push in <clears throat> hopefully get a nice stamp on it oh that was too hard <laughs> oh that's a good one Oh, that's a good one. This is supposed to be for chocolate, so it would definitely work easier. Oh, nailed that one. Look at that. Right, I'm gonna stick these in the fridge to firm up about 15 minutes because that should help hold the shape in my Barry Lewis biscuits. <laughs> because look, if we can make this work, any of you with a printer, as I say, can print these off and have some Barry Lewis biscuits at home. All right, it's been out 15 minutes. It seems like a good time to come back to the egg, which has hopefully separated. Uh, and you can see there's a little bit still trying, <laughs> but the egg white is in the bottom there, like a nice big old puddle. And I think, I'm not certain, but if I left that long enough, then the yolk would probably start to fall in there as well. So I'm gonna get that out. All right, so this one I did actually use already off camera to make my biscuit dough. It does work, although obviously the 3D printing one, this one, it got a little bit warped. Now this is pretty genius because this has been sat in my house, but there's actually already, like the jar key, a product out that does exactly this. And it wasn't the cheapest thing in the world. Your one-stop shop for all your measuring needs. Then this basically is the same thing. I think this is called the Baker Cube. The other thing was called the Cube or something like that. And this just tells me why that one day this, I'm not saying everything, but there are some things like measuring spoons as well could be available like this. Uh, it just works. So I don't need to do it. Action. Oh, Phoebe, you look like you're really struggling with those bags. Yeah, they're really heavy. Uh, are you okay? Yes. Try this. Ready, go. Oh, now you can walk home in peace. This is acting, okay? Is that good? Yes. All right, bye then. Bye. Thank you for my shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so that, folks, was the supermarket shopping bag holder. And I thought it'd be cool. Looked like a coat hanger when I first saw it. I'm like, what the heck is that? Works. Some of Barry Lewis biscuits. Look, it's for a logo. This is so weird. Uh, nice and chilled for at least 10 to 15 minutes in the fridge to firm that up. These will not take long to bake. This one should be amazing. I was looking at these the other day going, what the heck are they, all right? Now I only need one, and what we looked at earlier was when screwing the uh, citrus juicer on there, a thread, right? So one of these is filled with water, and apparently what we do, it's like a coupler, a bit like in plumbing. And then we counter screw the other one. The thread is not perfect but I'm not gonna rush it. There you go, look at that. This, effectively now, yeah, is an hourglass. It is a timer, apparently. So I'm gonna turn this over. It's 
sand timers are so overrated. Next time I'm playing Monopoly, boom. <laughs> that was 38 seconds. So with this 3D printed coupler, you can now have your very own timer. Now imagine if you use 330 mil bottles, which was what was suggested, maybe that is bang on 30 seconds, because I think that would help if you had it, but then you can get massive two litre bottles as well. I could time my Barry Lewis biscuits with a big two litre bottle timer. That is genius. Now this is genius. Uh, obviously you'd need to kind of clean it or sanitize it somehow when you take it out of your credit card, wallet, holder, whatever. But this is literally a cutlery set with a toothpick <laughs> in a credit card size. So apparently you should be able to just snap out. Look, there we go. I've got a knife. <laughs> I've actually got a knife. And hopefully if we do this right, oh yes, this is coming out well. We've got a fork and the toothpick. It's coming a little bit closer. It's got a slightly serrated edge. So I'm gonna be able to fork it like that and then just cut. Oh my gosh. And this isn't the sharpest knife, but that has actually worked a charm. I get my toothpick. Mmm, nice. That is stonking. I approve of that. There has got to be a future with this. We've got three more to go. I'm gonna let you have a little look at them, okay? This is a elephant thing with solid base and a little hole down there, slightly angled down on its trunk. Uh, we've got this thing. And we've got this, which only takes two minutes to print. It apparently was the quickest one to do out of the lot. All right, so number one, uh, this I thought were actually toaster tongs as well. In fact, you probably could get away with sticking some sticks in there of some kind, but these are fork tongs. So I have some forks here. Uh, and you're supposed to, oh crikey, I might break it. It's in there, <laughs> it's in, yes. We just don't have two of the same, that's not the same fork. Let's try something a bit easier. These are teaspoons, a little thinner. Oh wow, I didn't see that it goes up that end as well, it does. Yes, we've now got a pinch point. Perfect for scooping up some Barry Lewis biscuits. Proper stonking. Figured out what this is yet, folks? Had a little think? Had a little chew on a biscuit or a on a bus? Had a little look out the window go, hmm, what could that, that elephant thing be? This is a cutlery drainer, and this is how I'm gonna demonstrate it. We have a see-through dish, Apparently the cutlery goes in there after it's been washed up like this, shove it in there. Oh dear, it's not really designed to be on this surface. Now hopefully, <gasps> the fluid is coming out of the trunk. I hope you can see that because I don't really want to move this. There is fluid coming out of its snout. So that's designed to just sit by your sink so you can shove your cutlery in there. I mean, we just use the dishwasher from time to time, but love it. Looks like someone from Robocop. Folks, we've come to the end of the video and this is the last one. It's the smallest one I uh, showed you a moment ago. We rushed through these as quick as we can. I hope you've enjoyed it. This, okay, is a whisk. Remember the hack Mrs. B and I did recently with the fan? <laughs> no! Oh, it's gonna attack me. <laughs> Think about that but on a 3D printed scale without an out of control fan. I've got some egg whites here. I hate whisking by hand most of the time, but apparently with the help of some bamboo skewers, we have now got a whisk. So I'm gonna stop the video here. This is gonna be the bonus scene me whisking. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you next time. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. But wait, you've stayed past the Patreon credits for the bonus post whisk scene? Thank you. Here we go. Our whisk, I tell you what, that does feel very sturdy. <laughs> that is working. The only thing they do, <laughs> you can go like that or you could open it up and go wider like that.
I think it's better to actually hold them a little bit at the top and just... In other news, the pigeon has turned into a horse. <sighs> Do you know what? <laughs> I'm done. I've, I, I think we've, we've proved that it does work. That's taken about 20 minutes to do that. <sighs> Use an electric whisk, folks. <laughs> but that has worked. Remember when it comes to 3D printing, trust experts. I am no expert at this. Uh, this food safe grade stuff that you can get hold of and all that sort of stuff. But I say, reach out to Shardical Physics on Twitter for any questions about this video. And hopefully if you enjoyed it, let me know. We'll do a follow up very soon.